Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and today we are going to be talking about the Akashic Records, the Book of Life. What is it? Why would we want to access it? What might this provide for us? So first and foremost, it is thought that Archangel Metatron oversees the Akashic Records or the Book of Life. And depending on what belief system you are coming from, everyone has a different way of looking at it. So the way I'm going to describe it here is how I, as one person, a human being, <laughs> is bringing through this information. So just take it as it resonates for you. And of course, you can always contribute how you see the Book of Life in the comments down below. So as I tune in with Archangel Metatron, my understanding is that historically there wasn't as much access to the Akashic Records by human beings as you might think. Why is that? Well, a lot of people were maybe not knowing what they were trying to connect into, just not knowing what it is, or connecting into it and then wanting to use it for fortune telling. There are people I'm sure out there who claim that they do that. Uh, I'm feeling right now that you wouldn't have access to it. But what would also happen is people are really trying hard and putting energy into uh, trying to see what's to come and, and for themselves and that keeps them from being present. Really the best way I'm hearing right now to approach the Akashic Records is to show up and say, what do I need to know right now? That's showing up in reverence and respect and showing that you're in your wisdom, that knowing some things from the past may or may not be helpful, but if it's not helpful, why are you wasting your time on it, okay? So going back and trying to, like you might feel like you're stuck on something, you wanna go back to a past life, you could do that, you could do that with Archangel Jeremiah as well. We'll do a whole thing on past lives and Archangel Jeremiah. Oh yes, I got all this planned out for you guys, okay? <laughs> but as far as the Akashic Records go, people weren't accessing it very much for all the reasons I've already described, but now we're in a different frequency. So this is very promising. I had historically said, I'm not going to talk to people about the Akashic Records on a platform like YouTube because it just, I was getting a message to not really talk about it too much. Now we can, now we can in a broad way. And I think what part of that is, because I know some of you out there will be like, well, this person's been talking about the Akashic Record for like ever since YouTube came about. I get that, but you gotta remember the people who were attracted to that information were people who were ready for it. And what I'm getting at here is that it feels like there's a broader, uh, base now there's a broader foundation and many people are ready now to come in and hear about this i think it's very promising and i think it's beautiful so the akashic records it is every deed action thought this scares people thought recorded in what is seen as a book a record a scribe archangel metatron who oversees the akashic records is known as the sacred scribe so there have been many questions around this. Well, if I had that really bad thought, can I undo it? Metatron comes in and says, don't worry about that. <laughs> if you saw yourselves from our viewpoint, the things that bring you shame, you realize that you would understand that you don't need to have shame around that. That if you do have a negative thought or something along those lines, that's part of you going through your human process. So it's not as judged as much as you might have been taught to believe. You might come across a blank page. Now some people stop at that and go, wait a minute, I thought it was like the future already exists. I think that can be a reminder of your own potential and that you are writing your own story. So don't worry so much about the perfection of it. There's no way to control that. You are in an imperfect state. You're perfectly imperfect, right? <laughs> and you're meant to be. That is part of being human. That is part of being on a soul's contract. That is how you learn. If everything was just smooth sailing all the time, it'd get kind of boring after a while and you'd have no reason to be here, all right? So when we're talking about approaching the Akashic Records, do so with a pure intention, not to misuse the information that's in there and understand that it's not something that you have to reach for. The Akashic Records live within you. 
in your cellular divine wisdom, <laughs> right? It's just there and, and, it, and it might be dormant for some people. Now there are some out there who, you know, it's a part of their soul's contract to be really good with the Akashic Records. They're like the little librarians here in human form. And they can, with a soul's permission, a person's permission, access other people's Akashic Records. It might be imperative for them if they are a messenger to, because uh, I see the Akashic Records as having levels and layers. I guess layers is more appropriate. That's how it's come through me. And so there could be sort of like the Akashic Records of world events and um, histories and future of what's going to happen here, there and everywhere. But if you are not coming to the Akashic Record with pure intention to get that information, it will not be granted to you. Now, having said that, along the line of some people are equipped to do that. That's their purpose. They're supposed to be doing that. They can, <laughs> right? When it is appropriate. So this is not something to be misused. This is not something to um, try to creep into someone else's Akashic records. Again, if their soul's not giving permission for it, uh, Metatron is watching over this. So Metatron will know what your intention is and you will be blocked from it. You might come out of a meditation and go, no, I totally know what that person's thinking, feeling, blah, blah, blah. That's not how we use the Akashic records and you did not get it from the real book of life. You got it from your ego. Keep it ethical always. And remember what I said right from the top of this video. We're able to talk about this now because humanity is, is opening up. Right? It's opening up and it's expanding and now it's time. So how do you approach the Akashic Records and what might that experience be like? Everyone's experience is going to be different. Sometimes people just see light or they just see letters start to glow in the darkness um, and they just know, they just know what it is. Some people envision a palace. Uh, they might see an actual library or something of the sort. Now, the way I personally experience it, again, it's our interpretation. We hear Book of Life or we hear Akashic Records and we, you know, in our mind might actually see a book, right? And that's okay. That's the way that you're comfortable with it. That's the way it's presenting to you. You might see a library. Again, that's just the way it's named and we start to interpret it as it must be a library, right? So for me, when I used to, you know, when I was first starting to get into this, it was years ago, I've been reading Akashic Records for a very long time. And I would envision just light, just pure light. And sometimes it would form into sort of a building and uh, angels would always be there with me. And this is not uncommon. As a matter of fact, this is probably what's gonna happen. You're probably gonna be flanked by angels helping you get to the information that can help you the most right now. All right, so be ready for that. But more recently when I pop in, I pop in very quickly now, and I actually picture a dark room and there's a beautiful book, a gigantic book, sitting on a pedestal and it has a beautiful light coming down on it. And sometimes there's a chair, sometimes there, there's not. And when I approach it, the book flips open and the pages start flipping. And when I come up to it, it's in a language I don't recognize. I often see the letters glowing, sometimes lifting. Sometimes it'll go into English, which is what I can speak. Um, and sometimes I don't need it to be translated for me. It just, I just know what the message is. The Akashic Records can also be like a movie screen. I've heard people say this too. I've had that experience as well. That's kind of cool when it happens. <laughs> so if you go in and you're asking for uh, information about why you're stuck, what is my purpose? Um, what do I need to know now? You know, what have you, why, why is this happening with this person? You're not going into their records without their permission, but you can feel and pick up what their dynamic is with you. Yes, so how their energy affects you. So then that might be projected on like your mind screen. <laughs> I don't know, but you might see it play out and you'll start to have some bit of understanding. So an interesting practice to do only if you're ready. If you're not, that doesn't mean that you're not 
as ascended as everybody else. You're not as advanced as everybody else. <laughs> don't listen to those people. You are perfectly where you are. Don't even worry about it. If you feel like this is something that you want to try for yourself, you must come from a place of purity. If you do not, you will be blocked. Hands down, you will be blocked. So make sure you are perhaps even doing a meditation with Archangel Metatron. Be sure you are ready to see what comes up. And if that's the case, get on in there, do the practice, see what happens, report down below if you care to, because I would love to know what other people are experiencing and what they're seeing. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, I am sending you guys so much love and take care.